this is a very different area now from everything else we've seen because there's more water here usually. We saw Weston Lake and Oxbow Lakes have water, but it's standing. This is Cedar Creek here, and as you see, it's moving through slowly. This cleared off area is great for animals, especially when you clear it off by water. And there is the snake you would expect to see in a river bottom swamp area, the brown water snake. Look how big that non -poisonous, is. Non-poisonous, not going to hurt you. Non-poisonous snake, and in the water like that, you can, you can see those big squarish blotches right down the center of the back, and also down the sides. Pretty big head on that snake. A lot of people think it's poisonous, but non-poisonous. Most visitors to the Congaree can be expected to see that snake if they look close. That's one that comes out in suns. That's what he's doing. And look, easing down into the water now and almost really disappears into that brown water. It's an easy snake's name to remember because brown water snakes do like brown river bottom forest uh, swamp situations. This area being open is good for butterflies and dragonflies. Well, you say dragonfly. Look right down here and see the one with the glistening wings right down in, in the front of us there. Beautiful animal. Spectacular. Just yeah. emerged now. That, when the wings glisten like that, that lets you know that that one just emerged and it's drying out here. The wings are forming properly. Then it'll fly up into this open area for a while and then eventually start hunting for food. Very vulnerable now. A lot of big dragonflies feed on those recently emerged dragons. Will it take mosquitoes as well? Mosquitoes, it feeds on mosquitoes and uh, it also feeds on uh, um, deer flies and horse flies and things that really do cause us uh, some problems every now and then. A good place for butterflies and dragonflies. And for the reptiles again too. But open areas like this, especially when you keep them cut, and let clover. There's white clover over there. Look at the butterfly. A zebra. Uh, you've zebra? told, yeah. Swallowtail but that's butterfly. The first time I've seen a zebra look swallowtail. The, look at the tails. Look at the, when it's moving its wings, there's red underneath, sort of a red stripe uh, underneath, and then of course the uh, zebra looking markings on the wing. Why did you anticipate we might see a zebra swallowtail well, in Congaree? Because of pawpaw trees that we saw coming down the road. Very common uh, tree here, and the zebra swallowtail lays eggs exclusively on pawpaws. That's what the caterpillar feeds on. That is a beautiful butterfly there on white clover. It's interesting. That's an interesting clover because you see there are a whole pile of flowers there. The ones on the top right in the center haven't even opened yet. Ones on the side are actually open. Look what happens to the flowers after they bloom. They point mm -hmm. downward. Mm -hmm. And so that zebra swallowtail doesn't mess with anything pointing downward. just works on the, uh, Fresh flowers. On the open flowers. I see a little dragonfly here too. Now the zebra swallowtail gets nectar for food. He just landed right here. Look at the look at the little club tail dragonfly eating. It looks like from here a mayfly. You see it right there, just chomping down. That's what's that happening. Mayfly, yeah. yeah. We talked about of eating horse flies and deer flies and mosquitoes. They also feed on on mayflies. There. Look at the way mouth parts are moving, chewing it up. See how wide mm -hmm. apart the eyes are on that uh, club tail dragonfly. That's typical of that group of dragonflies. Not as large as the dragonflies go down here. No, 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 no. But that one is really uh, interesting, making a meal of the mayfly. Mayflies live in the water like dragonflies do and then come out, but mayflies don't fly very well. They're pretty flimsy animals. There's a mayfly there just uh, on the leaf right uh, close to the dragon there. Pretty flimsy oh, yeah. wing. See, kind of a yellowish body, a couple of projections out the back end. They live one day as adults. <laughs> And of course, reproduction is very, very important in that one day. It's fish will eat them. Right, and so do the dragonflies. Recycle the mayflies into dragonflies. Two very primitive insects that uh, you see one of them takes advantage of the, uh, of the other one here. Now, I find this hard to believe, talking of dragonflies. Look, look right there on the, on the uh, sumac right in front of us. See that dragonfly sitting right up there with his back oh, end dangling down? Four inches. A monster. Yeah. And that one's usually called the hero darner. Uh, it's a big one. The abdomen looks like a darning needle to some people, and so the name Darner. But the hero, it's a big one. It's one of the largest dragonflies that's found in uh, this part of the United States. Look at the, let's just get a little better view kind of on the back, Jim. But look at the, uh, look at the eyes on that thing. Bluish reflections. Uh -huh. Those are compound eyes. And these eyes now are not separated by a great distance as we saw in that club tail. They're crammed together. <laughs> And when anything moves in front of that dragonfly, it, it spots it without any problem. Now that is another uh, 
spectacular animal. There's so many interesting things. I saw some movement over here. Look at the, look at the hackberry butterfly that's landed right in the path down here. See mm -hmm. it? Right in mm -hmm. front of us a little bit, flexing its wings. Kind of hard to see markings on that, but uh, again, coming toward that, uh, that white clover. But you can see a lot of eye spots on that wing. Caterpillar feeds only on the, uh, or almost only on the uh, hackberry trees, the sugarberry trees that we so saw a little bit earlier. So that's where the name comes from? That's, that's mm -hmm. the name. A lot of times these common names connect the animal with the plant that uh, the caterpillar feeds on. That again is a beautiful butterfly and really a common one uh, here in Congaree. Open sunny areas bring out activity, but next to this water, Rudy, the big trees, are these cypress, are they tupelo? All right, this again is that cypress tupelo swamp situation that we saw uh, earlier. The one over there with a the really fluted base is the uh, ball cypress tree, and then the ones with the more rounded bases are the water tupelo. So we have both, and the, yeah. the fluted gives it away, the cypress. Yeah, this is a good way to really kind of get a cross section of a cypress tupelo swamp, too, and then the dark water of Cedar Creek easing on down around the bend there. Different kinds of habitats, great diversity of habitats at this place, and that what, that's what, you know, makes it special. Wait a minute, before we start even walking much further, look right on the ground there. What in the world is that? <laughs> now that is mating dragonflies. Remember the club tails we saw earlier? Two dragonflies. Two dragonflies, not one. The one up front there is the male. He's grabbed the female with a couple of claspers, they're called, on his uh, end of his abdomen, grabs her right behind the head, holds her in position, and then she turns her abdomen underneath his body to receive sperm. And there's, as you see, not flying. Sometimes you actually see them flying uh, united like that. Here they are on the ground. And again, the same dragonfly that we saw, uh, you know, feeding a moment ago. You come to these open areas to get food. You also come here to uh, look for, for mates. Lots of interesting things going on in the open spaces, but let's head back into the woods. Okay.